Today we'll be installing a cam phaser lockout kit for a 4.6 or 5.4 three valve modular engine. Start off by removing the valve cover. You'll see the camshaft in the cylinder head located here. The phaser attached to the camshaft here. The bolt holding the phaser to the camshaft here. Here you see the wedge tool. Note the slot in the top of the tool that allows you to put a screwdriver in. This is so you can apply downward pressure. Now we'll take the wedge tool and install it in the timing chain. Between the front cover and the phaser, jiggling it a little bit to get it to fall into place between the chain. Then using your screwdriver to kind of push it down a little bit farther. And you'll come around from the back side of the phaser using your screwdriver in the slot on the top of the wedge, pushing down with slight pressure to get it to slide fully in between the two pieces of chain. Once you're in position, using a hammer, tap on top of the screwdriver to firmly drive the wedge in between the timing chain. Once in place, grab the cord and pull up firmly a couple times to make sure the wedge is fully in place. We're going to remove the front cover so you can get a better view inside of what the timing chain looks like with the wedge in place, keeping in mind you don't have to actually remove the front cover for this operation. Here you see the wedge in place firmly between the two pieces of timing chain. It's important that the wedge is firmly in place between the timing chain. You can see that here by pulling on the cord. The wedge tool shouldn't move at all when being pulled on. Next, we're going to mark a link on the timing chain relative to the position of the phaser. It doesn't make a difference where the phaser is in relation to the timing chain when you start off. It's only important that you put a precise mark on the phaser that matches a timing link exactly. Upon completion of putting the phaser and timing chain back together, these two links have to be lined up precisely. If they're not, the timing on the engine will be incorrect and you could fail. Next, we'll remove the bolt holding the phaser to the camshaft. Using a 15 millimeter socket, remove the bolt. Next, we'll remove the phaser from the front of the camshaft. You'll have to wiggle the phaser just a little bit to get it to pop off the front of the snout of the cam. Then moving the phaser down a little bit to get yourself a little bit of free play in the chain. Pull the chain up and back to free the phaser. Once you get the chain free from the phaser, pull the phaser out and lay the chain over the side of the timing cover. Now we're going to move over to a vise where we're going to hold the phaser in position during the disassembly and reassembly procedure. For the older model phaser, you're only going to have a single bolt that you have to worry about that passes through and comes into contact with the spring. For this style, you're going to remove the four bolts that are short and just loosen the one bolt that passes through and attaches to the spring. This will let you swivel the cover out of the way and install the lockout, and then swivel the cover back into place without ever removing the bolt or unleashing the spring from the uh, captive bolt. It's important to note the two longer bolts that go through the phaser, located here and here. These hold the spring to the front of the phaser. We're going to mark both of these bolts to identify them later during the disassembly and reassembly process. Next, we're going to place the phaser in the vise, holding it in position as we remove the bolts. We're going to remove four of the five bolts, leaving the one bolt holding the spring fully in place. This bolt passes through the phaser and hooks onto the spring. We're going to loosen this bolt just a couple of turns just to free the cover. Next, we're going to slide the cover out of the way. There's a small spring right under the edge of the cover that you'll want to grab and hold as it'll try and pop up right here. Holding it down, slide the cover the rest of the way out of the way. You can release the spring, letting it pop up. Just leave it in place. You don't have to remove it. Next, we're going to install the lockout. You'll notice that there are multiple positions that the lockout could be installed at. But if you put them in and wiggle it, you'll see that the lockout is a little bit loose in these other positions. There will be one position, though, that will be tighter than the others. That will be this position. You'll notice when you put the lockout in, it will be a much snugger fit. Once you get it in position, just take it and push it down firmly, and it will pop into place. 
After popping it in place, you'll notice that there is no movement between the inner and outer sections. Next, we're going to slide the cover back into place. You'll have to push the spring back down into the small cavity, and then slide the cover over the top of it at the same time, holding it in place. After the cover is in place, we're going to tighten the one bolt holding the spring to the front of the phaser just a little bit to move the cover down. Then we'll take a small amount of blue thread locker, putting just a little bit on the edge of each bolt. Then we'll install each of the bolts, leaving out the one remaining long bolt that goes through the front of the phaser behind the spring. As we put each of these bolts in, we want to keep the cover and the rear aligned. You can do this by using your hand and just placing it around the cover and keeping it centered. Again, with the older model phaser, you don't have to mess with the spring at all. You just loosen the bolt slightly and the spring is left intact, completely mounted to the front of the phaser. Next, we're going to install the one long remaining bolt that goes through behind the spring. This is our position we marked earlier. We'll take the one longer bolt. We'll place it through the back of the phaser in our mark spot. You'll see that it protrudes out the front of the phaser just a little bit. We want to place it back just slightly so that when we move the spring, it doesn't interfere with the spring. We place it into the vise, holding it securely. And we're going to use a large flat bladed screwdriver which will move the spring into position so that we can position the bolt behind it. It's important when doing this that you use one hand to hold the timing reluctor on the front of the gear. You'll see it try to move away as you pry up. Keep firm pressure to keep it from sliding off. As you get up near, slide the screwdriver up and rotate it. Then at the same time, push the screw back into place. You'll see that the bolt is now firmly holding the spring in place, yet we still have to tighten it a little bit to get it fully locked into place. Next we're going to tighten the bolts. We're going to use a torque wrench, an inch pound torque wrench. The setting for the bolts is 145 inch pounds. When torquing the bolts, you're going to work in a crisscross pattern, moving back and forth across the phaser. As you torque each bolt, go through and double check with two clicks, and then go back once again in one final pattern just to make sure that you've had a click on each bolt. Now that the assembly is complete, you can pull it out of the vise. You'll see that we've got the bolts coming through the front, attaching to the front of the spring one bolt behind the spring and the other bolt holding the hook that holds the spring in place. You'll also note around the edge where the plate lines up with the back of the phaser and the inner gear that it's a clean concentric edge. Next we're going to install the phaser back on the front of the camshaft, noting the mark on the phaser and the mark on the timing chain. It's very important that these two marks line up exactly. Being off just one tooth is enough to cause engine failure. Once you get the timing chain back on the phaser, You'll have to position the phaser back on the front of the snout of the camshaft, wiggling it just a little bit to get it to pop into place over the alignment dial. With the phaser in place, next we're going to install our new bolt. It's very important to use a new bolt as the original factory bolt is torqued to yield and you only get one torque per use. Next we're going to torque the bolt using our foot-pound torque wrench set to 40 newton meters. Next we're going to mark the bolt and the position of the bolt relative to the phaser. The bolt needs a turn of 90 degrees to complete the torquing procedure. These marks will allow that. After the torquing procedure is complete, we're going to remove the timing chain wedge, giving it a firm tug, and that's it. You can now reinstall the remaining components.